We cannot hear the, uh, the sound, uh, Mariana. Ναι, η Ερασμία το κάνει. Λογικά, Ερασμία, άνοιξε το. Right.
Good evening, everyone. And can we briefly start? Uh, my name is Diana Filimon. I'm the board, a board member of Digital Communication Network. And uh, tonight we are uh, having another event uh, organized by DCN, Southeast Europe Hub and World Learning. And it's part of uh, DCNC's Ideas in Action Digital Engagement, a series of virtual events launched in the context of the COVID-19 crisis. Um, DCN is supported by the US Department of State's Office of Citizen Exchanges. And uh, it's been created in 2015, for those of you who haven't uh, heard about our story, and is a 7,000 member strong collaborative network that connects professionals from a variety of fields and different regions of the world. Um, as you have probably seen, if you followed us during the last year, we have been uh, covering various subjects uh, through the virtual discussions. And uh, tonight we want to, um, to dive into a very interesting subject because um, as most of us have seen in this area of disinformation, uh, it has evolved uh, continuously du during the last 12 months and very weirdly. And we have reached a point where we need to have a serious discussion about a new form of manipulation, which has uh, resurfaced under the name of chip fakes, which unlike the deep fakes in this form, there, is, uh, there are no fake content because it is real information, but thoroughly manipulated to hurt someone. Some of you probably have heard for the first time about cheap fakes in the case of the US Senator Nancy Pelosi or CNN reporter Acosta. So you don't need very specialized skills in order, uh, in order to uh, perform this manipulation. This is what makes them even more dangerous because they can be made literally by almost anyone. And I have a very uh, strong viral potential uh, in them. And uh, for this, you only need some basic computer software knowledge and uh, a little bit, I would say, of sense of humor, but not necessarily. <laughs> So tonight we have uh, together with us uh, very, uh, very two, two speakers who are very uh, experimented in following this subject. And uh, the first is uh, Drian Gerguri, who is a lecturer at the Department of Journalism, University of Pristina in uh, Hassan Pristina in Kosovo. And the second one is my colleague from Forum Apulum, the NGO in Romania, where I'm part of, who is a disinformation expert and one of the founders of Fake News Hunter project, which is a collaborative project we started last year in April between Greece, Romania, and which extended to, to other countries, and who is follow, which is following very closely how the disinformation has organically grown during the last year. And uh, you can follow us for more information about this uh, this project. But I would like to um, to first uh, first of all invite Dren to to tell us more about chip fakes. What why are why do they call uh, them chip fakes? Uh, how much did they change during the last year? What that did the last year do for this uh, for this section? And should we worry or should we make fun of them and carry on? <laughs> the floor is yours. Thank you, Diana. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure being uh, here today with all of you. I have prepared a few slides, so I'm just sharing the screen. Okay. Okay. Let's 
So uh, the, the advancement of, of technology uh, brings up constant innovations in the areas of, of misinformation and disinformation and, and manipulation. And recently and more frequently, a new form of uh, manipulation has surfaced and is currently a, a, a subject for research and, and, and discuss and has the name of, of, of uh, cheap fakes. So in addition to deep fakes, which is the most and uh, most advanced technological manipulation, uh, cheap fakes has already gained more uh, worldwide attention because it is most easily manipulated in the, technolo in the technological sense. So cheap fakes is a manipulation of video, audio, and photography. This form of manipulation can be achieved by using some basic computer softwares, which enable interference in video, audio, or photos. Uh, the deliberate selection of certain video sequences does not tell what was said or what actually happened, but diverts reality and switches those who want to distort the truth. Uh, so today we are focused on audiovisual uh, manipulation. Uh, Diana mentioned if if we we can make jokes with the cheap fakes or we have to be like serious, and I think that we we could do both. So it's the idea of having if if we make jokes on and using cheap fakes, it's a way of telling the others that cheap fakes exist. So we can do something like that and to tell them that, okay, cheap fakes is, is there and you can do jokes, but also we can have a, like an online manipulated content, which could be used for influence. We have seen it during election campaigns and also during the pandemics, because there are a lot of misinformation videos that were shared on, on Twitter, Facebook, social media, and uh, they were like misleading because they weren't videos of the pandemic's time, but uh, uh, those that shared them, they used and uh, they, they shared this, this type of uh, disinformation and misinformation and connecting with the, the pandemics and COVID-19 because everyone was interested to have more information about uh, COVID-19. And we live in, a, in an age when people trust more images and videos. So and they also prefer to have information with like infographics, with videos, short videos, images. And in fact, also we have the, the technology when today, uh, images, videos can be easily faked by almost anyone. So, and that's why it's very important to discuss uh, cheap fakes and other, other ways of, of uh, uh, manipulation, because I, I think that we all agree that today, nowadays, it is easier to fake people in, in, uh, in videos. So deep fakes that uh, we are all familiar with are artificial intelligence really and techniques to graft faces, primarily faces onto existing videos, but you know, it can also include voices or grafting faces onto already excellent bodies and videos, and those are deep fakes. But uh, also we have to be aware of cheap fakes that is using more conventional methods of audiovisual manipulation, like speeding up or slowing down footage, footage, stagging footage, or, you know, having someone stand in for another person to recontextualize that footage. So these cheap fakes are the most uh, accessible uh, forms of audiovisual manipulation, and they are not, you know, technically sophisticated, but they work to play with context. And like I say, they uh, use lookalikes, stand-ins, real revealing footage of one event or one person in is another. And through doing this, media creators, you know, uh, if we want to, to put it. So 
very loosely can easily manipulate an audience uh, audience uh, interpretation of of this so today uh, we are able to manipulate videos and images using machine learning and these results are now almost impossible to tech detect by the human eye and you know anyone with the public media public social media profiles fair game could be fake and the ones uh, that these faces exist online they can go viral on social media in a matter of seconds and they are really hard to take down uh, if uh, if that's you know uh, I prefer to call this defakes and cheap fakes a new ways of manipulation as fake news 2.0 because we have we had earlier fake news usually focused on text but uh, and maybe photo but now we have this uh, audiovisual manipulation this way of manipulation with with videos we start it started more with deep fakes but now especially on the last uh, last year we we have seen that in fact uh, i think a, a major uh, threat is also cheap fakes because it's easier to do so when we talk about deep fakes in every person can do that but for cheap fakes it's it's really it's really uh, easier and so uh, well, that's why I put it there cheap software because you don't need like uh, uh, a software that you have to pay on it or something like that. But it's it's something that, for example, also an online video editor, when you can trim and you can cut a, a video and when you can put uh, a, a out of the context that that video and 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 things like that or you can speed up or, or slow down the the, the video uh, these are the three main types of cheap fakes so uh, recontextualizing slowing and speeding uh, i have three cases from from Kosovo, uh, from us uh, uh, i couldn't find a video but we had a, a cheap fake on kosovo on uh, 2019 elections it was a case uh, from uh, one of the vice presidents of the Democratic League of Kosovo, Lutfi Haziri. And uh, for example, Haziri's manipulated stat statement was then used against his party's candidate for the post of prime minister in the election on that time, Yos Asmani, which now is the new president of, of Kosovo. And that video was just a cheap fake. So what what they have done is like they they have taken out of context what was presented and how Haziri portrayed the uh, Osmani as a candidate on 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 that time. And this mixed and out of context video, uh, in effect, uh, sent a, a different message to the public. So and if anyone wasn't aware of that they could thought that yes, Haziri has said that because they have seen and, and they have heard uh, Haziri saying that. I have also this uh, uh, Biden case, which is from the last elections in US. So I'm just uh, sharing the, the video, just a moment. Uh. Dren, we cannot hear it. Okay, just a moment. Because the Republicans are doing everything they can to make it harder 
for people to vote. Is it okay now? Okay. Yes, it is for people of color to vote. So go to IWillVote.com. Secondly, we're in a situation where we have put together and you guys did, did it for our administration, the President Obama's administration before this. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. What the President is trying to do is discourage people from voting by implying that their vote won't be counted, it can't be counted, we're going to challenge it, and all these things. If enough people vote, it's going to overwhelm the system. You see what's happening now. You guys know it as well as I do. You see the long, long lines in early voting. You see the millions of people have already cast a ballot. And so don't be intimidated. If, in fact, you have any, any problem, go to, and I don't have the number, but it's 833-DEM-VOTE, the, the letters D-E-M-V-O-T-E. -E. Call that number. We have over a thousand lawyers, over a thousand of them will answer the phone. If you think there's any challenge to your voting, go to 833-DEM-VOTE. Dial those letters on your phone. That will get you the assistance that we have already put in place. So what, what we have seen here, it's uh, 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 decontextualized this audiovisual content. So. One such example is this manipulation in the last US presidential elections when it intervened in the response of the Democratic candidate for president, now the US president, uh, Joe Biden, presenting him as he was admitting the vote fraud. Narrative that defeated Trump and, uh, and his supporters who constantly uh, talk about uh, vote reading in the, in the presidential election. And this video was shared on social media by Trump's son, uh, Eric Trump, by White House Press Secretary uh, McKenney and others. And in fact, the truth is that Biden in that video talks about attempts to fight voter fraud. But as, as you have seen on the video, it was the uh, original content and also the isolated one, which which is one of the types of, of few quakes. Uh, another one is the, the case of Pelosi, which is one of the most famous uh, cheap quakes. Uh, okay, just a moment. Here's this one. We took uh, the majority. Here is the real video of House yeah. Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And then he had a, a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals. That now the doctor video in which she appears to be impaired. And then he had a, a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals. We took. Well, this is another type of cheap face when you slow down the, the footage. And uh, while, uh, while deepfake, it's also uh, harder to prepare and also to detect, on deepfake's case, it will be easier because it's, it's always, you have to, to check the, the footage. So for example, if we put this video to a software like uh, Adobe Premiere, then you can see that if you go uh, frame by frame, you will uh, get the, uh, the, the, the place when uh, the others has uh, uh, altered this, this video. And that you, can, you can see that, in fact, that it's not the real one. Because by the frames, you can detect when, it, when something is not going on the, on the same way. And another example, which I wanted to, to share with, uh, with you is the last one of now the speeding up video, which is related to a journalist, Acosta, CNN journalist. 
So in this case, they have speed dubs in the footage. And here, Acosta is showing that uh, as you can see also in the in the uh, in the video, they try to represent Acosta as more aggressive man. But in fact, his reaction was very normal when you see the the real video. So these are the the main elements, the main types of, of cheap fakes and the, some of the methods that uh, you can uh, detect a cheap fake when they are produced and having this type of fakes. And uh, I think that Invit, it's one of the tools that we can use to debunk fake news and to verify videos and, and images. Uh, except the Adobe Premiere and other softwares that could help us to check the frames of videos, especially uh, with Invit, we can like use this tool to see and to 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 use internet to search for us if this video or if this image was in internet also before, especially when we have seen uh, fake news related to COVID nineteen. We had cases when they have shared a Twitter, for example, uh, relate and related to COVID-19. But in fact, uh, in the internet, the same video was founded in 2017. And we know that in 2017, we didn't have COVID-19, we didn't have pandemics. So this is one of the ways that we can, we can do and we can use uh, the invid in order to find this type of uh, fake news. I want just to share also the, the invite with you and their page. So this is the, the invite and we, you can use their Twitter post, uh, Facebook post also with, with YouTube. And I have some, uh, I have put it here a link of uh, from uh, from Twitter. So when we put that link and we submit it, they will they will have uh, uh, some data for us, like counts and, and things like that, which are which are not in our interest now. But what we want to see is this one: the thumbnails took from the video, because using the thumbnails and using, for example, Google Image Reverse Search which could be also helpful to detect uh, fake photos uh, and also fake videos from the uh, thumbnails took from the, the videos. Or we can go to the photo and use Google image and other uh, platforms or forensic. Forensic, it's a way when we can see like, for example, like this, the, the video, the photo, sorry, in this way. And for example, here, uh, we can have these things which, which are here, which tells us that they are put it after the video. So it's something that is manipulated, for example. And this is one of the cases when we have seen a, a footage from uh, Trump and other leaders and uh, uh, Putin in the middle. And in fact, Putin was put there by someone and it was for real. And one of the ways to detect that is using this one, map one, map one here, because you will see like with this uh, redness and uh, yellowness, you will see everything that they have put it there, which in fact wasn't there. Thank you so much, Dren. Uh... Okay, so this, this was, what I have uh, prepared, and of course, I'm open for 
for questions. So thank you for your attention. Thank, thank you so much. Please feel free to, to ask any questions for Tren either uh, in the chat or uh, at the end of the presentations. And I would like now to, to invite also Ciprian to, to tell us how is humor used sometimes against us in, uh, in this information by this new phenomenon of cheap fakes and what do they have in common with the memes? Because we all know memes and we all like memes. So. <laughs> Is there any connection or not? <laughs> Indeed. So um, um, thank you, everyone, for being here. And thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you, Dren, for the, a very interesting presentation. Though I, I knew a little bit about cheap fakes, but uh, you did a, a great work of um, organizing everything and, and showing us exactly what happens. Um, so uh, my, my idea was that um, this connects in a way to the way that we've seen memes being used because at the beginning memes were just uh, some fun content, people playing around, but then they kind of became repurposed and started serving another goal. So I um, started to, to think about this and I have a few slides to show you on this topic uh, about how we got from memes to, to cheap fakes and, and uh, why, what, what connects them in the end. So um, of course that most people today already know this character. It's the Pepe frog for people who maybe don't know about this yet. It's um, been very uh, popular at some time. Um, it all started as a comic book character um, developed in, I think, 2005. And um, he was just a very relaxed uh, kind of guy, funny, and kind of representing a 20 year old uh, guy just uh, having the time of his life and uh, drinking beer and hanging out with his friends and just doing uh, stuff like that. But um, the comic book died in 2010. So the creators stopped it. They even had a funeral for Pepe at that time. But unfortunately for a lot of people, they, it didn't stop there. By 2014 or 15, um, especially because of um, 4chan and the alt-right movement, Pepe became, became something else. Um, there are a lot of discussions uh, regarding the reasons that Pepe was chosen or happened to be the one that was appropriated, let's say, by this, this um, movement of, of the alt-right. Uh, but since that happened, um, it took on a life of its own. The, the, the um, our initial artist um, was against it and they tried to have sort of a movement to reclaim the, the character, but they didn't manage to do it because of how these sort of networks work um, and um, because they couldn't stop people just making and uh, using uh, Pepe in all kinds of contexts. So um, it, it didn't take long for these uh, memes to become political tools we have here two examples of that. On the right, you can see that the Pepe frog is, is there just behind Donald Trump. Um, and uh, the meme on the right has actually been shared by Donald Trump Jr. on his Facebook page in September 2016, getting over 10,000 likes. Um, so it's this idea that the alt-right movement um, wanted to double down on the critique that it got 
as uh, being irreverent, of being um, incorrect, uh, politically incorrect. So they took to this sort of making fun and exaggerating everything and um, creating this sort of uh, popular culture uh, items that we now have. Now, this is a very interesting quote from a um, guy that is an artist. He's um, um, interested or he became interested in various conspiracy theories. And he says, um, the information war that we are in against the deep state is very real and artists and designers are at the front lines because we are designing these memes in a way that would enter the public consciousness as quickly as and as efficiently as possible. They can see one meme and understand an entire academia of knowledge. So what struck me when I heard this in a podcast dealing with these issues was that it's an actual um, intentional plan to use this method of transmitting information um, to be as instantaneous as possible and to draw in people because they are so easy to connect to by, by just being um, funny and, you know, a little bit naughty. So what happens in uh, actuality is that it's all about reinforcing a narrative or all about reinforcing a message in a fun, irreverent way. So you, this is part of a disinformation ecosystem in the sense that um, you have, and Dran showed us that, you know, we have uh, influencers, we have even the press secretary of the, the former administration in the US, you have uh, media outlets that um, get into this game and they create these narratives. And in order to double down on these narratives and enforce the message and get more people towards it, then you, we have the memes and we have the, the funny stuff and we have the cheap fakes now. So what's the, the connection? Well, it's actually quite simple. Memes, as our artist friend earlier said, have to be you know, creative, have to be original. So what do you do if you're not creative? Well, it's very easy to do cheap fakes as Dren has shown us. You can just do very small edits to, to video or photos that you have. You can use existing content. You don't have to create the content um, and you get the same functionality. You get to the same end to reinforce a narrative that you're trying to push. And of course, the fact that, you know, memes are mostly static, are, are, are mostly um, images, um, May, makes cheap fakes even better in a sense because videos are um, so uh, good in uh, getting uh, um, an important reach. So this is one very, very basic example that I found circulating on uh, Romanian Facebook. Uh, these are just some screenshots of a video um, that I found, and it's actually they didn't do almost anything but just add a subtitle to a, an existing video and changed the message, changed the whole topic. Um, so the video is from, I don't want to be mistaken, I think it's from the Danish parliament and they're talking about some laws regarding uh, circus animals. And you can see that um, the person talking is, is kind of uh, laughing because there was some 
funny thing happening with uh, buying elephants and uh, giraffes and uh, things like that. But the subtitles that we're seeing are connected to COVID. Um, they are saying stuff like, well, we started vaccinating uh, people who were hurried to get vaccinated. Uh, though we are not sure that they will not uh, fall ill with COVID and now we don't know what to tell them until the pandemic blows over on its own. So the message is completely changed and the fact that the people are laughing makes it even worse. Now, the funny thing here is that this all started as a hoax. The page that uh, distributed this video and uh, probably created the subtitles, um, they describe themselves as a trolling page, as a page that promotes memes, trolling, and fun content. So it's hard to say that they are really, they really believe in this narrative that um, in these conspiracies about, about COVID. But the point is that some other people believed it that the video got uh, 53,000 shares and the page has only 30,000 something followers. So there was a lot of uh, people taking it um, uh, seriously and uh, uh, considering that, you know, this is proof that look in a, in a parliament, they are laughing about COVID and they are doing some very, uh, evil things there to, to trick us somehow. Um, another example that has recently been circulated on an international level and it got to Romania as well is that uh, the worms in the mask um, narrative, I'm not sure if you've seen this and this is this is very weird. I mean, not something that you would normally expect to, to see people discussing that there are various worms in face masks, but here we are. And um, it got to the point that people do, did these experiments, let's call them on their own, but they misinterpreted the results, they took everything out of context and they jumped to a preformed conclusion that you, you can see that that small black thing there in the middle of the picture, they claim that that is a living organism, a worm of sorts, but of course it's only a piece of thread that was uh, a moving because they would put this mask on top of um, uh, steam pot, so the steam was moving that uh, that thread, and uh, again, this reinforced anti-mask narratives and wasted everybody's time. There were there are several debunkings of these videos. Uh, there are several articles written on this, so you can see that you know, starting from this very easy and very simple thing, we lose a lot of time and we have to have an, a lot of effort to kind of try and um, uh, go beyond and explain what is happening. So why do they work and what do we do about it? So of course, my, my point that I'm trying to make is that everything is uh, of course, uh, comes down to confirmation bias. Uh, we've seen this in a lot of other uh, disinformation techniques as well, and it's a real challenge. And of course, we all have our biases. It's a natural um, mechanism of the human mind. Uh, and when this confirmation bias is uh, touched with uh, fun and uh, easy to understand piece of content that's almost almost instantaneous because you know that's the commonality be be between the meme and the cheap fake uh, that they are based on this image video thing that 
goes directly and tells you, look, you can see it's it's there. This is this is the thing. This is the thing that you have to worry about. Uh, of course, we can talk about how videos are promoted by social networks, uh, promoted by algorithms. Uh, there are a lot of cases when you uh, are on Facebook or on YouTube and uh, what watch some videos and then you're recommended other videos and very easy you get to various conspiracies and uh, um, cheap fakes and, and uh, videos like that. And of course, uh, it, they are very easy to create, which uh, implies that we might get a large volume of them. And this makes them uh, difficult to debunk or to contain. So that's uh, an, an issue we should keep in mind. Now, what to do about this? Uh, well, besides trying to fact check them, I think that's, that's somewhat complicated. And, and if there's a lot of content, then it's going to be a lot of work. Uh, of course, when you have some uh, cheap fakes about uh, the president of, of the United States, it might be worth it. But other than that, it's kind of difficult to try and catch them all and put them to various uh, programs and, and see if you can uh, debunk that uh, video or not. Um, I think that one thing that we should do is sort of be aware of this. I, I like this idea of pre-bunking a lot, this sort of inoculation. Um, it's difficult to get, but if we can kind of guess what the next crazy idea will be and talk about it and write about it. We kind of take the, the, the myth out of it. We take the interest out of it and um, it will not spread that far. And of course, but this is, as we know, um, long-term solution, we should fight uh, biases through education. I mean, general critical thinking development, but also media literacy is helpful because we want to um, help um, everyone to have this sort of built-in mechanism radar that instead of uh, going to the confirmation bias and, and, and being uh, satisfied by instantaneous uh, gratification that they see something they already believe in to replace that with the mechanism that's more um, inquisitive that says, well, is it though, is this really what happened, what's happening or should I look for some more information? So I guess this is my um, presentation. Um, thank you for um, watching. And of course, let's uh, talk some more. Thank you, Ciprian. And uh, I would have a question uh, for you and also for Dren. Um, how, do you, how do you feel that uh, the cheap fakes evolved during the last 12 months and or since the beginning of the pandemic? And how do you feel they will evolve, if so, in the next period? What do you, what do you feel that it's happening? So in, in, in my view, uh, this is always evolving. I mean, what we're seeing, the cheap fakes, is a, sort of a basic way of manipulating information that we've seen before. There was this very common uh, picture that we've seen online um, that was telling about media biases and media manipulation. There was kind of this sequence of images with one image showing uh, 
a, a man holding a knife and then uh, uh, the other image was kind of zooming out and showing the bigger picture that was completely different from the first one that we thought we were seeing. So this was happening for quite some time to trying to reframe or trying to focus on a specific point or trying to manipulate by taking out of context. Context, the problem that we're seeing now is that this got mixed in with social networking and the new technologies and as Dren was saying, it made it very easy for everyone to do it. So I'm not sure that, um, and, and this is, again, this, this evolved kind of organically. If we're looking at the uh, 4chan style uh, boards, we can see that, that, was, that there was a huge exchange of ideas that were not necessarily, um, let's say, good for society. And, they kind of evolved because of that that place. I'm not sure that in the last 12 months there was an evolution and I don't think that there's necessarily something or someone driving this evolution. I think it's just more like, oh yeah, you know, I can do this or just people reacting to what's going on um, uh, around them. Um, and uh, for for the next uh, period of time, um, I'm just uh, I, I just think that we're gonna see more and more of these um, images and videos taken out of context uh, of context and not necessarily that they will change in a fundamental way. And if I can, Keep fakes it's talking about using basics knowledge. So that's why there is no like a need to evolve or to, to have something else on that. So you, you, you just need basic knowledge of uh, video or uh, photo manipulation. If we talk about deep fakes, then we can see the evolution. So now, Nowadays, the face is about I know very small pixels, so it's not something that happened two years ago, for example. And we we, we can see uh, uh, evolution on on the face. For cheap face, I think that it's the most important thing. It's for us to be aware uh, that they are there and to try the idea of having media literacy, especially on schools, on education, and to prepare the societies that we have these types of uh, manipulations, cheap fakes, that they are viral. So, because they, they were always with us, uh, with us as, as, as humans and manipulations, well, fake news and manipulation, it's not something that it, it has been in, invented from, uh, after the internet. So it was every, every time there. But is this the idea of how we communicate now and this uh, change of communications and using more social media and uh, smartphones, different apps that makes it even easier to do such, uh, such video manipulations. And that's something that we have to be aware and always to keep in mind that uh, nowadays, it's better to be a little bit skeptical about uh, media content and to have this journalistic sense of uh, verifying everything that we read and see uh, nowadays. I will, I will follow up on what Dren was saying and I would ask you as we get closer to the end of the meeting to to say one advice for the people who are watching, uh, because we are definitely more vulnerable in this period because we're more online and we don't know exactly how long will this last. 
one advice to to make sure that the informations we are accepting as true are really true, be it uh, videos or I don't know, news, titles, clickbaits, whatever. What would you advise people to do? Yeah, la uh, le last April I published uh, an article talking about vaccine but uh, a vaccine for uh, infodemia, infodemic, because they started to call this fake news and everything like that, which was related to COVID-19. And uh, from the WHO, they started to, to mention the word uh, infodemic. So uh, I called the vaccine for infodemic and which has three main questions. Earlier, when we discussed about fake news, usually they were like, researchers that said that we have to make 10 steps for being sure of an, of an information. But for, for the last year, we have seen the dynamic of information spread and the communication and everything. And so I thought that it could be better if we have like three uh, basic questions. And the first one is who is the author? So who has written all uh, that information that we are reading it. And uh, so who is the source? And which this is very important. The second one is the same information also on other media outlets. Because if we are talking for COVID-19, we know that it's a very relevant news and it's impossible to have only, I don't know, in a Facebook page or, or in a Facebook group because it will be very important. And all the media, including mainstream media, will have it. So you have to search and to see if the others have the same information. And the third one, the uh, in what sources is that information supported? So for example, if they are uh, experts, if they are institutions, or who is saying that? Uh, it, one of the fake news is that it was translated in a lot of languages was about uh, a Japanese doctor who says that if uh, we can stay without breathing for 10 seconds, are infected or not. And this is a fake news that you can find it also, not only in Albanian, but a lot of other European languages. But my question is, who is this doctor? Because there is no name there. So, if you don't have a name, so you don't know who is it. If you have a name, then check that name on Google. And this is another case of a doctor in US called Rashid Buttar. And he talked uh, in, a, in a video uh, published in, in YouTube and he talked about the conspiracy theories uh, related to Gates, Bill Gates and microchips and things like that. And then when I checked who is Rashid Buttar, because on that news, he was presented as uh, one of the best doctors on, 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 on US. But when you search more about him, you can find on uh, mainstream serious media outlets in US that he is not as he was presented. And you can find that in the, uh, among others, uh, he has brought the uh, patients his clients on, on the hospital. So things like that, you have to be always aware uh, when you when you got a, a, a information on the, on the media everywhere. So my suggestion, it's not only for social media users and the people that got the news and the information from the social media, also for online media and all the medias that we have. Because for example, we, we have seen that in some countries, we have media that are traditional with history, and now they are very uh, near to the government. And sometimes they don't actually report the truth. So that's why it's very important to have like, to use more than just one information for uh, getting, get, just one source for getting uh, information. I, I will just um, add one thing to what Dren was saying. Um, and it's a thing that I'm, uh, I'm working on myself. 
and uh, that is to, to try to relax. And uh, I mean that in the sense mm -hmm. that um, don't, don't try to, to prove anyone wrong um, and try to accept that it's, it's difficult to, to change their opinions. And, and um, I think that a problem we're having is this increased polarization and it's um, actually uh, kind of, um, you know, there are, there are TV stations, media outlets who want that. There's, there's a TV channel in Romania, if you're watching it, you have the feeling that the apocalypse is going to come in any, in any second. And every, every second there's a new thing going on, things blowing up, uh, people trying to kill you, to, to steal your money, to, to do something to you. And if you, if you fall into that rabbit hole, then this is how, this is why you get to the confirmation BS because then you see something on the internet and you say, aha, uh -huh, I was right, I knew it, they are out to get me. So I think that this is the, the thing that we all should work on, try to, to relax a little bit, try to be a bit more uh, dispassionate, not, not to, to give up, but just, you know, try to stay calm and, and accept that, you know, everybody can be wrong, even ourselves. That, that is a very um, hard to admit <laughs> thing <laughs> that we can be wrong. And I think that's the, the basis of uh, all the information because we find it very hard to go against our biases and our our ideas. And also to admit from time to time that we might be wrong and that we are all a little bit overwhelmed this year, especially of emotions and various states of mind. So uh, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Dren and Ciprian. Um, and uh, once again, uh, I will invite you, as my colleagues did in, in the chat, that if you want to stay tuned to our events and to our projects uh, and uh, whatever else we might prepare for you, just fill in this form, fill out this form, which is uh, available in the chat. You can follow us on the classic social media platforms, uh, on Facebook on, and everywhere else, and on, on Twitter, uh, of course. And also subscribe to our newsletter because we are trying to keep you posted that each week with new possibilities of getting involved in our projects or in other projects. So thank you once again and uh, stay safe. First of all, from uh, viruses and from disinformation, and uh, we'll keep in touch and see you soon. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you.